Hey there, crew. Brandon here. Welcome to another Masks Monday, the show that brings your tabletop RPG capes from zero to hero. Today I'm going to be talking about two of the basic moves in Masks A New Generation, directly engage a threat and unleash your powers. This is going to be a four-part miniseries that brings you through the basic moves. Your basics form the skeleton of the game and are really the most important thing for you to understand as a player and one of the most important things for you to understand as a GM. Once you have these building blocks, the rest of your story can fall into place. Mastery of this first step is the very first piece to becoming a really, truly, phenomenally great Masks GM. Let's talk directly engage first. The move reads, When you directly engage a threat, roll plus danger. On a hit, trade blows. On a 10 plus, pick 2. On a 7 to 9, pick 1. Resist or avoid their blows. Take something from them. Create an opportunity for your allies. Or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. The first thing to look at is always the trigger. In this case, that's when you directly engage a threat. If it isn't a threat, this move doesn't get rolled. The GM just arbitrates, probably in the player's favor. If it's Wolverine versus a single guard, there's no need for a roll. We know what happens. No threat, no roll. It's also engage. If you're just keeping someone busy and kind of dodging around, this roll doesn't happen yet. It's only when you really go for the big hit that it does. Just describe some awesome panels and give us the feel of the comic book. That's totally okay to do. Same for if you're attacking somebody and there's nothing that they can do about it. If you're bringing down a meteor from space while you are on the moon to attack someone on Earth, then you don't need to make this roll. The GM just narrates the concussive blast coming down and smashing them to the ground. And then makes a GM move. GM moves are coming up later. But remember that any time a villain or other NPC marks a condition, the GM gets to make a move. They have a response right away, and that's very important to hit. Now let's go through the options. If you choose to resist or avoid their blows, you and the GM describe how you're able to get through that situation, how you weather it. How you weather it, or how you dodge it, or just how it doesn't end up affecting you. That can differ character to character. If you're Colossus, you're wading on through. If you're Nightcrawler, you're not getting hit at all. This is a way for the players to act defensively, so if they are choosing this one, especially on a 7-9 to nine where it's their only choice, be sure that first off, you aren't directly affecting them, and secondly, that you're not giving them the other options for free. They get the hit against the villain, the villain probably marks a condition, but don't give anything else out. No freebies. That said, if they choose something else, be sure that you're really giving it to them. Especially on a 7 to 9, when they didn't choose to resist or avoid their blows, they better get something nice out of it. This was a success. This was a hit. If they choose the option take something from them, this could be very literal. I grab hold of his soul-sucking sword. It can be more tactical. I push him back and get control of the doorway so that he can't get past. Or even more kind of weird and metaphorical. He's really holding control of the situation, and so I'm going to bust him out of the way and make sure that the media spotlight is on me. One thing players ask for all the time is, I take their consciousness. Don't, don't accept that. That cuts the entire fight off. You can't do that. Similarly, if they're saying, I take their life, that's the same but worse, and is probably not tonally in line with what you're playing at the table. If it is, Masks needs a little bit of modification. It's not meant to be a gritty superhero death simulator. There's the lighter, oh, he's holding a sword, so I take his hand. Which, I mean, look at the tone of your game, see if it makes sense. For the most part, I think it probably doesn't. Are the heroes in your book really that callous that they're just severely wounding somebody like that? I don't know. That's pretty dark. But other than that, give it to them. They can take Magneto's helmet, they can take Thor's hammer, they can take away whatever they have. Just also follow the fiction. You can get the hammer away from Thor, but can you pick it up? We have pre-written rules for that. Giving an opportunity for an ally is another of your choices. It's one that I see given a little bit less oomph by a lot of GMs, and so I really want to target it hard. Giving an opportunity for your allies essentially does one of two things. It either gives them the chance to do something they otherwise couldn't do, for example, punching Galactus really hard in the face, 
or it gives them a boost at something that they're already capable of. Here's one of those times where reading the book is really important. If you're choosing the first, then you're giving the opportunity for your ally to go and do the thing and do something awesome that they couldn't normally do. If you're doing the second, you also are adding a team to the pool. I literally have not seen this done at a table, including my own. I literally have not seen that done at a table, including my own. So uh, if you're a fan of Protean City Comics or Latin Explosion, expect to see that happening more often in the future. It wasn't until a reread that I even saw that feature existed. But if you give them that opportunity, don't hold back and make it impossible. If you're holding the baddies back so that your teammate can run and grab the hostages, they can probably just do that. If the threat is held back, they're good to go. And a player made the decision to choose this as an option, so be sure that you're paying attention to it. Up last is the opposition is surprised, impressed, or frightened. If the player does this, it's the GM's job to choose which of those it is and to actually make it so. Think about how that structures their following actions. Maybe they run away, maybe they hunker down and turtle up, maybe they even offer a chance for the heroes to join them. But remember, they're rocked back. The GM gets to choose which of the three it is, but something has changed about the situation in a dramatic way. This is an awesome way also to get a little bit of extra like conversational drama going on during a fight. If your masks fights are just, I punch, I punch, I punch, then you're not really playing masks very well. On a miss, the GM makes a move. All of the basic moves have the same structure that it just puts it into the hand of the GM, and the GM should be picking from their list of either GM moves, villain moves, or playbook specific moves. It's easy to just say, oh, you take a powerful blow, or oh, you mark a condition, but you have all of those options and you shouldn't be afraid to use them. They'll make your game better and they'll keep things organic and expanding. PBTA games truly sing when you use a variety of GM moves. I'll definitely be coming back to these in at least one video, but for now, just make sure you're reading that section if you're going to be the GM. Alright, on to unleash your powers. When you unleash your powers to overcome an obstacle, reshape your environment, or extend your senses, roll plus freak. On a hit, you do it. On a 7 to 9, mark a condition or the GM will tell you how the effect is unstable or temporary. Let's start with the trigger again. If you're not using your powers, it doesn't trigger. Superboy trying to sneak stealthily around doesn't get to use Unleash his powers. He's just putting his actions in the hands of the GM. If you want to make the move, use your abilities. Additionally, if you aren't overcoming an obstacle, reshaping the environment or extending your senses, it doesn't trigger. Period. Some things are just default for heroes. If you're just flying across the city casually to grab a cup of coffee, that's not a roll. Assuming you can fly. Flying to get around in a hail of laser fire? That's a roll. You're overcoming an obstacle. This move can be a little bit fiddly in terms of when its trigger is involved, but the core thing to remember is that it kind of is a backseat move. If another move explains it better, go with that. I want to use my tech powers to get some information about what's happening inside of the base, Sounds like an Unleash Your Powers, and it might be, but it could also be an Assess the Situation. So if Assess the Situation makes more sense, use that. I want to use my tech powers to find... I want to use my tech powers to find where my ally is being kept. That's an Unleash Your Powers. You're extending your senses, and that's the more important thing. But back to the move. On a hit, they get it. They do it. Give it to them. Do not half give it to them. The worst thing you can do on a 7 to 9 is make it so that they failed. They rolled the hit. They can only fail on a 6 minus. That doesn't mean you don't get to do something fun as the GM on a 7 to 9 though. On the 7 to 9, the player chooses if they want to mark a condition or have you get to get involved in it. As the GM, you decide if it's unstable or temporary, and you don't really need to say exactly which one it is. The players can kind of work it out, but they'll have decided ahead of time if they want to mark the condition. Don't give them the option and then tell them the condition. If it is going to be unstable or temporary, don't invalidate their success. I want to stop the building from falling, but it falls anyway is not unstable or temporary. That's... they failed. Instead, make the situation further complicated. This is an opportunity to punch up your plot and come up with something new that you didn't have initially. If the hero is holding up the building to make sure it doesn't fall, 
Maybe it's temporary in that they can't hold it forever. Maybe it's unstable because the gas system looks like it's going to blow any second. They get their success, but you add a complication and the plot rolls forward. There's two big misconceptions about Unleash Your Powers. One is that it's a pushing my powers role. That isn't the move. If you're not overcoming an obstacle, extending your senses, or reshaping the environment, a role doesn't happen. Just making a big fireball above your head and holding it there to impress your friends isn't an Unleash Your Powers, even if you make it a big, huge fireball. Seeing if you can fly really fast because you're curious if you can fly faster than you ever have before isn't an Unleash Your Powers. You're not overcoming an obstacle. You're just going real fast. Don't roll to demonstrate your powers unless it's doing another function. It might be a good provoke to threaten somebody into attacking you or to backing or to back down. It isn't just, look how shiny I am. The second big question that I see with Unleash Your Powers is how it interacts with combat. The question of, is Spider-Man directly engaging a threat when he webs up someone's hands is a big one. Go back to the trigger. He's not directly engaging. He's keeping him busy. That can be handled with a couple of panels and following the narrative, but if we are really curious about it, the example used in the book is trapping someone in a huge magnetic cage, then Unleash Your Powers can be appropriate. Here's where that temporary comes in. You're not going to hold him long. Sandman's hands are webbed, but he's going to get out. He's Sandman. Remember that Unleash Your Powers should always take the back seat to directly engage when directly engage makes more sense. Now, if you're not trying to do something specific, don't use Unleash Your Powers either. There are some things that are maybe a little bit more iffy and have to be taken on kind of a case-by-case -case basis. Specifically, the Doomed has some mind alteration powers that are a little funky to move around. I'm going to come back to those powers in the Doomed video. But fundamentally ask the question, does this take the villain out of the fight? In which case it's directly engaged a threat. Or does this temporarily inconvenience the villain and change the fighting situation? Unleash your powers. Unleash your powers also has the six minus that is a GM move. Pull from your GM list. Don't just say they fail. If nothing happens, then you haven't done your job as a GM. You have to make a move. Things have to change in some way. That doesn't necessarily mean that they failed at what they were doing, just that things got worse and harder and changed. So that's Directly Engage a Threat and Unleash Your Powers. Next week I'm going to be back with another two moves, which I'm going to dissect in a similar sort of way. If you have any questions about either of these moves, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I'd be happy to answer anything that I'm able to. If you like this video and would like to see other ones, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that bell so every Monday you get the reminder. This video and my other game design is funded by my Patreons. You can join them at patreon.com slash beleongambetta. It's linked in the show notes. Next week we're back with two more basic moves, getting you closer to being the best Masks GM you possibly can be. But until then, keep being a force for good in a world that hates and fears you. Bye, folks.